CEOs like Mary have such a tough job today in this crisis. How should they be thinking about the future of big business in this country? CEOs like Mary are the most important people right now in the next few weeks because we're going to have to start reopening some right across the street. It's not one of Mary's shops, but there's salon diversions. You can see the paper shop on the corner. These small businesses, these franchises, these medium-sized businesses, my barber shop, whatever, in the next month or so, they're going to have to reopen and do it safely. We're not sure. This is a really weird virus. So we're not sure how socially distant you have to be in order to be safe. So we have to be careful. We got to make sure people wear a mask whenever possible. And we got to make sure that we keep the social distancing, but still try to reopen our businesses. It's going to be a delicate balancing act. In Louisiana, we're starting it. In New Orleans, we're starting it on Friday night. And I hope we can do it carefully. Mary, I know you're thinking about this uh, every day. One of the challenges, of course, as I mentioned, you know, the hardship that, that you're having to, to deal with is that big business doesn't become smaller business on the other side of this. How do you think about that? Well, I would say I'll just step back and say thank you, Walter, for your comments. And you're absolutely right that business is working. I've never seen CEOs collaborate better across every industry across retail to do exactly as you said, which is figure out how we can do this safely as well, you know, for our guests and our employees, as well as, you know, reopen the economy. And so I think everybody's going to be looking at this very closely, step by step, but really joining hands around the lens of, chase, you know, safe shopping practices, which we're all deploying. Um, and you mentioned maps. I mean, in retail, we're, we're requiring at all duty all of our associates to wear masks. And we're encouraging guests to wear masks because it, it's, it's really respectful to our employees and really helps prevent the spread of the disease. You know, Mary, it's Walter here. I was on your website, and it's great. And it's almost a, like, 12-part program, you're saying, to the customers. Here's what we're going to try to do for you. We're going to have hand sanitizers. We're going to have masks. We're going to give you, you know, those sort of things. Tell me what you're thinking when you say to yourself, how do I not only be safe for my customer, but make sure they feel safe? Well, it's exactly that. It's really being transparent and open, but it starts with our associates, and we really have spent the time to listen to them and train them, help them feel comfortable with all the steps that we're taking, and then making the journey to the customer really clear and obvious. So through every point of communication, but most importantly in the stores, that they can see signs, they can see the social distancing markers, they can see the mask, but they can also order and have a curbside pickup. You know, I, we call that beauty to go. And uh, there's it's giving uh, guests uh, choices and aligning with other retailers so that whatever retailer you go to, you should feel in TV safe. So, Mary, tell me, how does the payroll protection program affect you all? And is it are you all franchises and does it affect each person? Well, no, we actually we own 150 stores across the U.S. I'm getting a lot of backlash. I hope you guys aren't hearing that. Uh, but anyway, so uh, in terms of the noise. But anyway, so we've got 1,250 stores across the U.S., and those, those, those are not franchised. Um, we are, you know, we've uh, looked at all aspects of the stimulus plan, and one that's been helpful for our associates, frankly, is the CARES Act and the unemployment insurance expansion. Uh, because unfortunately, like many retailers, we have to furlough uh, quite a few people. But we also felt that that system and that program was going to be very helpful in the meantime before we bring it back. We were uh, we were hearing that. I'm, I'm, we're going to try and work on that that issue, uh, Mary, and get back to you if we can. I want you to know that there's no noise like that down here in New Orleans. <laughs> we're pretty calm down here. I don't know. Maybe maybe very late at night on Bourbon Street there might be uh, no, Walter. No walk away from here. Let me ask you, um, people like Mary have, have to think long and hard about the kind of corporate citizen they want to be right now, especially as a, a very big business with a lot of employees, because, Walter, they must know that they're going to be judged uh, after this crisis on how they performed for their customers and their own people during this crisis, right? I just had a conversation last night with Mark Cuban, who's on your network. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and he was saying this is going to be the big thing for corporations is, did you have a bond with your workers? Were you transparent with them? Did you have a bond with your customers? And you can try to, you know, everybody's struggling here. They're struggling to make ends meet. They're struggling sometimes not to have to shut down. But in that struggle, you got to prioritize the fact that you got to do what's best for your employees because uh, in the end, you're going to want to reopen and reopen strong. I think we're going to see this change the sense of American business, especially, you know, retail businesses, that a lot of it is about compassion and loyalty. And, and Mary, Walter's so right. You're back with us. I'm, I'm glad to have you, have you back. You, you only get one chance to do this and to do it the right way. And I'm wondering how you're thinking about that, of, of being a good corporate citizen, so your thought of that on the other side of this by your customers and your own employees. Yes, well, I would say that our associates are at the heart of everything we do, and we have been transparent. We have had their health and safety at the top of our minds as well as that of our customers, and I've seen that across everybody I know in retail. I know many more CEOs today than I did two months ago. And so I think Walter's right. This is a time that we will be judged by our actions, um, but we might not get it perfect. We are going to be humble and transparent and listen and learn and, you know, bring beauty back. <laughs> also beauty ready. We wish you well. Mary, thanks so much for being with us. Walter, we'll talk to you again soon. Appreciate your time so much as well. Hey, see you again, Scott. Thank you. Right. That's Stay Walter well. Isaacson joining us there. Mary Dillon as well.